in this video, I'm going to be showing you guys how I made a pH balancing mouthwash. I'm also going to be showing you guys why I chose the ingredients that I did. If you're into that kind of stuff, please uh, stay tuned. So these are the ingredients that I'll be using. Here's my baking soda. I actually have it in this little container. And I have this bottle. I got it at a yard sale, I think, for like 25 cents. And I'm going to be reusing it. So that is zero waste. Is that's a little bit larger than a quart size. So I think it's, I think it's about 32 ounces, about five cups. Don't pick anything, it's me. I also have this cream of tartar. And then I have my salt. I'm just gonna be using the pink Himalayan salt. Uh, regular iodized table salt does have like fillers and stuff like that in it, so uh, I don't think that would probably be the same, but I mean, in a pinch you could use it. Also, other things you could add is probably something like xylitol to sweeten it up and it has dental benefits, but this is just what I have on hand. I think next time I go to the store, I probably will pick up some xylitol or just order it online. Um, but in the meantime, this is what I'm doing. So I'll probably go with peppermint a funnel that fits well into your thing. I always use this thing. And then you're just going to need a small shot glass to um, put, put the stuff in your mouth. I'm going to be doing four teaspoons. What, I'm gonna, what it is essentially is one teaspoon per eight ounces of baking soda and the cream of tartar. And for the salt too maybe, but I'm wondering if that's going to be too salty. I'll see. So for me, with 32 ounces, that would be three teaspoons, which is actually equal to one tablespoon of the baking soda. That was three and one of the baking soda, the sodium bicarbonate. I went ahead and measured out my cream of tartar or the tartaric acid. Same thing. It comes from, it's collected off of the bottom of wine barrels. And it's also, I put this in my water when I remember for electrolyte because it is potassium. Okay, so there is my one tablespoon. I think that might be good enough. I'll just go ahead and add another. I don't mind that it's salty. It's just a mouth rinse. I think the salt for the mouth rinse will be good. By the way, did you know that baking um, powder is pretty much just baking soda, cream of tartar, and cornstarch? So I'm not sure what cornstarch is as far as pH, but I wonder if in a pinch you could just use some of that. Dip your toothbrush and rinse out your mouth or whatever. But anyway, so here is my powder solution. And I'm just gonna mix this up really quick here. And then I'm going to pour it into my bottle. And I did put warm water just to help with dissolving everything. So I did, I am going to just go ahead and put a little bit of clove. It'll, I'll probably just only put a, a couple little drops because um, I don't want the kids to complain about it being too hot. If I can get it out. Yeah, it looks like it's beating up on top. You see those? Maybe I won't have any more of that. Let's see what happens with the peppermint. Tell us it gets beating up on top too. Maybe I could just drop some cloves in there. Like some whole cloves. Oh, that was a lot. 
Okay. And I will shake this up. And you can use this rinse after you eat, like, oh yeah, I see all the oil on top. After you eat, like, coffee or something like that, just to, or like when the kids eat candy, to be able to um, get the pH of your mouth more balanced. Let's see if I can do this without spilling. Okay, I think that should be enough. Let's try it. That was extremely salty. So I'm gonna have to definitely dilute that. Also, I've decided to go ahead and make the same thing again, but using only a third of the amount of salt. And I'm also just gonna keep it in its powdered form. So I've already done this one time. I'm just going, I'm just adding um, in a second scoop of everything because I had a little bit of extra room in my jar. So one tablespoon tartar. Teaspoon. One tablespoon of baking soda. And then I went ahead and added my essential oils right on top and you just gotta shake it. Now this is the part of the video where I wanna get into how I chose the ingredients for this recipe. Also guys, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you can catch more of these videos anytime that you so desire. <laughs> <laughs> I was just scrolling through some um, products to give me some ideas and I came across this one that I really liked. It's a zero waste brand and you can buy the refills but it's $15. I went ahead and checked it out. I mean, it, to me it looks like a really good product and I actually like the packaging on it. Um, so I went ahead and looked at the ingredients and those were actually pretty simple. You can see it's just baking soda, tartaric acid, which is cream of tartar, and sodium benzoate, natural coloring, which we don't need, menthol, thymol, and flavoring, which we just use the essential oil. So I googled sodium benzoate and it, I just found out that it's just a used for food pickling. So I thought, you know, pickling salt, which is sodium chloride. Uh, sodium chloride is just the name for salt. So the pH of baking soda is 9, which is slightly alkaline. And the pH of tartaric acid is a 5, which is slightly acidic. Salt is neutral at 7. And in this case, the 9 and the 5 will neutralize each other and they will both be a 7. And water also is neutral. When the pH in your mouth drops below 5.5 and becomes acidic, uh, demineralization starts to happen. And what that means is that minerals just literally get pulled out of your teeth. So what should the pH of your mouth be? You can just do a really quick Google search and you can see that the normal range is from 6.2 to 7.6, which is 7, being exactly right in the middle of the scale. It's a neutral. And if you keep on reading it, it says don't brush. Avoid brushing your teeth after eating high acidic beverages such as soda, fruit drinks, and whatever. And that actually doing so could further cause damage to your enamel, which protects your tooth. So that's where this mouthwash comes in. And... Um, since after eating a lot of foods, our mouths do tend to be more acidic, you can just do this mouth rinse and it can restore the pH, which will harden your enamel back up, and then you can brush your teeth. So what I've been doing is, this is really strong, so I've been diluting it by half, and my intentions for this one is pretty much the same way of the one that by, by the Humanity brand that I was inspired by this recipe for. But anyways, I just take my little amount of water and I'm gonna put about, this is a quarter teaspoon, but I'm not using the whole thing. I'm just using like a tiny little bit. And then I'll put that much in there and it will dissolve together. And then you can just use this to wash your mouth and it's like effervescent. And it will restore the pH of your teeth. And so it's just a nice little quick rinse for after you eat and before you brush your teeth even. And that's it guys, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and thank you so much for watching.